<laughs> Blame yourself. If you hadn't like killed, the, if you hadn't killed the guys in Benghazi for number one, I mean I, that right there was the biggest blowout ever. Right, exactly. That's always been the, the the one thing that sets me off more than anything. I'm friends with a couple of the um, of the men that came back and drives me nuts. But yeah, Smashley just said fuck Killary. My son even knows she's a killer and left military people to die, and that's actually awesomely epic because my nine year old son has walked around for two years talking about uh, Killary for prison. Even my kids are like, no, we, we don't want that at all. <laughs> like, ever. <laughs> Crazy. I don't think she lasts fucking a week in prison. <laughs> I don't... That's what I'm hoping. <laughs> that's, that's what you hope. <laughs> I can see her now walking in with her light three inch fucking mattress and her like two inch little pillow <laughs> hugging onto it walking into you know but you know what I, I bet you I bet you a million fucking dollars they would put her in like fucking solitude <laughs> cause they know these people would just have an epic time just torturing her <laughs> I mean you know there's they're, they're, they're no transvestites in, in the women's prisons not that I know of but I'm sure they'd find something big enough to ram up her ass <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm still, I'm still hoping they put her six feet under. Get my, my personal opinion, but that's, that's just me. But you know, whatever. I thought we treated treason for treason, but I guess not. Yeah. But I yeah, agree. hey, man, what's up? <laughs> man, Lee, you got a big ass crowd coming in. I hear you, sis. Oh hell yeah. Hey, Rick. Yes, my kids are awesome, and it's not because I'm biased. It's just because my kids are awesome. It's the same. <laughs> That's fucking okay, epic. Yeah, yes, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's epic, epic, epic. Uh, so, Lady Liberty Unplugged. First episode. I'm used to seeing. <laughs> I know it's weird not to see somebody's face, but you know, this, this was my whole opinion about the radio. There are many other networks out there that like to live stream. But when you live stream it takes away from a lot of what we believe in doing. Number one, speaking our fucking mind, saying what needs to be said that other people are scared to say. You can't play badass music because they cut you off. And the same thing with the comedy bits and everything else we play. If you live stream, it takes away from all that. All you're doing is really sitting there looking at somebody's face. You know, no offense, because we love your coffee talks. I mean, we really do. But, oh, yeah, you know. Oh, coffee talk. Now, that's just, I mean, you know. I don't, <laughs> I don't get a large following on the coffee talk. But there, there's a point in our country where we used to be, like, more of a, um, like, a large community. It was really, like, a nationwide community. And, and you could go anywhere at any point in time. And someone had a coffee pot on. And y'all could sit and just bullshit about anything. Right. And we, I think the biggest problem in this country, really one of them, is that that doesn't really exist anymore. You know, it's just gone. Like that that feeling of openness and welcomeness and, and, you know, if you've got a problem, you need to go talk to somebody. My door's open, my coffee pot's on, and there's a chair right here in the kitchen. It's gone. Um, that's where I came back with the coffee talks is, is I miss that, and I'm only 32 and I miss that. So I can imagine for people, you know, older that, that grew up that way all the time for generations and they're just like, you know, we don't even talk to our neighbors anymore. So. Yeah. And that, that is, that is sad. I'm, I'm 38 and, and I grew up with my grandparents and it wasn't anything for, you know, somebody to step outside. Hey, what's going on? How you doing? All right. Let's bring over a watermelon and you're right coffee <laughs> coffee would be it on it's either coffee or sweet tea and sitting there cut up on a watermelon and just bullshit you know just laugh and carry on about things and then next thing you know it turns into a barbecue we, we we've lost that and exactly i think that's something that, that that should be brought back especially for our brothers and sisters out there who are you know no longer with us i think that would be a <laughs> Smashly watermelon, fuck yeah. 
Lynn, <laughs> smash Lynn her food. Yeah, me too. I ate a whole pan of brownies today. Don't don't judge me. <laughs> but you know, I, I think that would be I, I think that would be something epic if we could actually bring back the society. It is just a regular general that, conversation. Right. And that's kinda how that happened was, you know, everybody's on social media, everybody's, you know, geared towards this this automatic information highway that we have every day and, and half of us don't know what's real and what's not and everybody's arguing even if you're on the same side and I was like, All right, you know what? We gotta take a step back. Let's just sit here and have a freaking discussion about whatever. It doesn't matter, politics or life or kids or if you have a problem and you need someone to talk to and you see me on, on a live, you know, hit me up or whatever. That's the only way we're going to get back to being what we always were, you know. I mean, and like like a couple of them just said, yeah, I get some trolls that love our coffee talks too, um, <laughs> amateur psychologists and, and the like, but uh, they get shut down pretty quick. We, we generally... We just want to have a, a good Sunday morning with some good coffee and bullshit. I mean, that's how things used to get solved. That's how things used yep. to be done. And that, that's kind of where we got away from because of social media. So if I can take social media and, and get it back just even a little bit, then, you know, that's what I'm going to try to do. But that and I love my friends and I can't talk to them all at once. The messenger so. And that's badass. No props to you for doing that because it <clears> – <throat> You know, it, it, it is weird. I, you know, I live in a pretty big apartment complex, and really, I haven't really talked to any of my neighbors. Uh, yeah, I see them outside. Hey, what's going on? How you doing? Da, 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 da. You know, they see me with, I don't know, I guess I'm just freakish, freakishly huge. That and Lena, she's a shepherd, so I don't know if they're scared of me or scared of her. <laughs> but, you know, right. it, it's, it's, it's not like it used to be. You know, go there. Hey, can I borrow a cup of sugar? Sure. <laughs> Did that the other day, and they're like, I don't have any. I'm like, really? I'm not going to get racist right. here, but there's have, certain people that yes, always have. have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very to me how the world's become so, so paranoid and so closed off and, and so judgmental. You know, it's like. And y'all, y'all have seen me. Y'all have all seen me. You know, I got my head is shaved. Most of my head is shaved. I have tattoos. I have piercings. Most people that would just see a picture of me and be like, "Oh, she's a liberal." It's that automatic need to judge somebody, mm-hmm. and it, it's so it's so stupid. It really is stupid. You know, it, it's crazy. I don't know. I mean, I, yeah, it's more dangerous nowadays, and we have to be true, careful, and pay more attention, but. There's got to be a way for us to try to turn it back a little bit, you know. And I mean, we have yeah. things like um, the the Texas shooting that happened. I don't want to get too serious on my first mm-hmm. show, but I had a big personal problem with the uh, false narratives and the fake agendas and and the conspiracies being thrown around. Not because they don't exist, not because it doesn't happen, but because this specific time, it was like. Um, just within a matter of seconds, like the news hit and, oh, my God, there's all these connections to all this stuff. And as a journalist myself, I know it's impossible to find that information that fast. I don't care who you are or how good you are. And it, it just sat badly with me because while I'm trying to not combat the conspiracies but verify them, I'm finding everything exactly opposite. This right. man was nothing more than a bad person his whole life. He, he had evil um, you know, evil and dangerous episodes from, from before high school went on. And it, it was clear what he was. There was text message threats and phone calls to the in-laws that went to this church. I mean, he made it clear he intended to take them out, and he did. That was it. That's really the extent of this man's story. All these people that are like, you know, oh, there's this connection and this connection and that connection, they don't actually exist. They're not there. Those connections are made up by people that want us to be in the position to argue about something that doesn't exist because then they can go back and run the narrative that conservatives are crazy. They set that up on purpose. And it actually surprises me that so many conservatives have gotten to the point where they fall for it so often and so easily. And it, it kind of, it made me mad because I'm that conservative ish person. That's like, I will expose anybody on any side. I don't care who it is. If you're wrong. 
and people don't seem to want to pay too much attention to the truth anymore as long as whatever they're posting speaks to their narrative. It, it makes us no better than the other side who we accuse of doing that all the time. So I flipped my script with that one and I was, I was extremely angry and it goes back to the point of the matter that we don't pay attention like we used to. We don't have any form of ability to stop for a second, step away from politics and say, maybe this doesn't have a damn thing to do with that. Maybe this guy was just a psychotic asshole, which he was. You know, not, not every moment of our lives is based around something politically bent, and it shouldn't be. Right. Because there, there are crazies out there. I mean, you, you, don't, you don't have to be military to, to, to be crazy. Yes, some of us are literally put down on paper as nuts just because of our PTS. There are literally people out there who just lose their minds, you know, and... I was listening to something on the radio today. Um, actually, it was uh, it was Betty Show, and she had a good point. You know, whenever we were whenever we were kids, you know, we had uh, Atari, the first Nintendo, and Sega. Yeah, you know, we were only allowed so much time on that, and then it was, hey, take your ass outside and go play. Shit. Don't think I didn't take that chance. I ran, got on my bike, and my ass was gone. <laughs> when that and don't bring light... your home until that street light comes on either. <laughs> you damn right. And and hey, if you wasn't home fun. by the time that street light was on, all your all, all your mom, dad, or grand or my in in my case, my grandmother and grandfather, all they had to do was sit out out the, out the front door. Brian, Jason, get your ass home. And eventually it would pass through the neighborhood. <laughs> and somebody like, uh, Brian, oh, yeah. your grandmother's trying to get a hold of you. She wants you to come home. I'm like, oh shit, I better go. <laughs> but, you know, yeah. you didn't, you didn't have to. Look at you. <laughs> you know, they didn't have to get in the car and roll around. You know, uh, technology, yes, I, I do believe that technology has become a part of why our youth is growing up the way that it is. Even some of our, you know, younger 20s, you know, 19, 20, 21, up to 25, I think it is. There, I mean, there are even some dudes, you know, no offense, there's nothing wrong with playing some video games, but don't take it so fucking for real. I mean... You know, just like these racing right. games. And, and that's break, though. Go ahead. You know, like, it's like we have all this stuff that everybody wants to blame for all the bad things, from music to video games to movies to TV, and I agree that most of it has become geared to, to really brainwash our children. But I think the bigger problem is if you're going to allow your children to do these things, YouTube and, and the video games and whatever – you have to then step up a little bit more being a parent mm -hmm. and state, look, this is not real. This is the game. This is this. This is that or whatever. It, it, you have to put a little more effort into being a parent because you have to make sure they understand the difference between what's real and what's not and what should never be. And that's, you know, the, <laughs> the death of American marriages. Yes, and actually, I actually agree because – my, my my ex that I divorced was one of those video game players, and that's why we're divorced all these years later. But, uh, yeah, it, it's really, you know, we can parent all we want to, but if we don't step up parenting, we almost have to super parent now to combat it, but there is a way to do so. You don't have to take away what these kids are all trying to do. You have to teach the correct way to do it, and exactly. that's my opinion. Exactly. I don't censor any of that. I just make sure they're aware, you know? Yep. And, you know, it's my son, 17 years old. He used to be in the video games a lot when he was a lot younger. But that boy, he'd rather go jump in the creek, get dirty, go ride a skateboard, go ride his bike. <laughs> well, he drives nowadays, so <laughs> that shit's kind of put off to the side. But they're always out going and going and doing something. You know, whenever there's a concert going on and he knows dad's going, he's right there beside me. 
little miniature Kid Rock headbanging right there beside his dad. You know, nah, 